When Auckland University College opened in a disused courthouse and jail on Eden Street, it welcomed 95 students, women and men. Three of the first four professors taught science subjects, and in 1884, the university's first benefactor, Judge Gillies, donated two science scholarships that are still awarded today. The first holders of the new Chair of Physics, Welshman Gwilym Owen, and his successor, New Zealander Percy Burbridge, were recommended by Sir Ernest Rutherford. Physics drives cutting-edge technologies. The Auckland Nuclear Accessory Company began in the department and was one of New Zealand's earliest technology companies. Today, Professor Katha Simpson's Photon Factory brings versatile, ultra-short laser technology to university and industry scientists. Modern chemistry, such as quantum theory, entered the syllabus as the department moved into a new science building in 1919. But it was through the research of Professor Bob Briggs in the late 1950s that organic chemistry became one of the Faculty of Science's particular strengths. Early work was also undertaken by New Zealand's youngest ever Doctor of Science, Charmian O'Connor. Today there is a direct line from Professor Briggs through Professor Brian Davis to distinguish Professor Margaret Brimble's research into the chemical synthesis of complex natural products for the development of new pharmaceuticals. Psychology became a subject in its own right when it separated from mental science in the philosophy department. Now, behavioural and physiological psychology, cognitive neuroscience, social, developmental and qualitative and feminist psychology are all represented. One of the founders of qualitative psychology is Professor Margaret Wetherill. Another pioneer is Professor Donna Rose Addis, the first Samoan and the youngest fellow appointed to the Royal Society of New Zealand. She uses brain imaging to study memory and its relation to future thinking. Today, psychology is 33rd in the 2017 QS World Rankings, the top ranked subject in the Faculty of Science. The Lee Marine Laboratory and its director, Dr. Bill Ballantyne, played a major role in the establishment of New Zealand's first marine reserve in 1975. It became the world's first no-take marine reserve and seeded expansion of the concept worldwide. Research at Lee has always had direct relevance to fisheries, aquaculture and the health of our oceans and marine life. Research by Associate Professor Rochelle Constantine into deaths from ship strike of the endangered brooders whale led to changes in shipping in the Hauraki Gulf. Since 2014, not a single whale has been killed. After World War II, the nature of the university changed. Auckland University College became the University of Auckland. By 1965, student numbers had doubled to five and a half thousand. The new science building provided extra space and improved facilities and was formally opened by Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Name the capacity of you all in New Zealand for hard work combined with vision and wisdom. I am sure that in the future, the scientists will win renown and fame to the benefit of all mankind. I therefore now have much pleasure in declaring open the science building of Auckland University. Roy McGregor travelled widely, searching for and systematically collecting specimens for what became one of the best vertebrae zoology museums in the Southern Hemisphere. Today, the School of Biological Sciences is a powerhouse of research activity. For example, Professor Rod Dunbar and Professor Debbie Hay in the Maurice Wilkins Centre search for human therapeutics and the discovery of new medicines and vaccines. Professor Joe Putterill is using molecular genetics to study flowering plants' reaction to time. Computer science may have had the first laser printer in the university, but it began as the only department without its own computer. And few of the original academics had computer science degrees. Now this country's leading computer science department, the latest initiative, led by Professor Jill Dobby, is an information and communications technology graduate school. 
to meet the needs of the country's fastest growing industry and third largest exporter. As a recipient of the Fields Medal, the Nobel Prize of Mathematics, Sir Vaughan Jones is a Department of Mathematics most illustrious alumnus. His discovery of a polynomial equation that allowed a mathematician to tell whether two seemingly different knots were genuinely different, or just a variation of the same underlying pattern, has affected mathematics and physics in a huge number of ways. Commitment to mathematics led to the formation of the Mathematics Education Unit, currently headed by Associate Professor Caroline Yoon. The research group has vital links to Auckland secondary schools, with specific outreach to low decile schools. The Department of Statistics is the birthplace of R, an open source programming language that is one of the world's most extensively used statistical analysis software packages. Ross Ihaka of Ngati Kohungunu and Ngati Pakeha descent and Canadian Dr. Robert Gentleman developed R so they could complete their own data analysis without relying on packages that didn't meet their research needs. Associate Professor Rachel Fuster coordinates another free software program developed in statistics. Catch IT is a one-stop shop for data management and analysis for community pest control projects and scientific research. By the 1990s, there was an urgent need for new ways to attract and retain Māori and Pacifica students to study science. Led by Professor Michael Walker of Te Whakatohia Descent, the first support initiatives were developed in the School of Biological Sciences. Tuakana has evolved into a university-wide programme that each year helps thousands of Māori and Pacifica students realise their ability to succeed. In 2014, the faculty established a new initiative, the Science Scholars Programme. The best and brightest students from New Zealand and abroad are selected to work closely with our leading scientists and teachers. The Department of Sport and Exercise Science was the brainchild of former Vice-Chancellor Sir Colin Maiden and the then Dean of Engineering, Professor Ray Meyer. Exercise Sciences worked to understand the role of exercise in sustaining health, improving disease outcomes and enhancing human performance. Through the university's clinics, exercise scientists prescribe exercise as medicine for conditions that range from cardiac rehabilitation to pelvic floor health. In 1947, Englishman Kenneth Cumberland was appointed Head of Science's newest department, Geography. New Zealanders came to know him through the documentary series Landmarks. All the men who did reach New Zealand played a part in transforming the face of the land and they did so more ruthlessly, more completely and in much shorter time than in any country anywhere. Cumberland built a strong department with some outstanding geographers who went on to distinguished international careers. Today, field work takes place across the globe. Professor Kathy Campbell's research stretches even further. As a world-renowned specialist in extreme environments, she is using them to search for life on other planets. Last year, over 11,000 people visited the Public Educational Centre and its popular outreach program provided 121 classes for schools. A plaque honours Edith Winstone Blackwell, whose lifelong principle was education for all. Her descendants and stewards of the Edith Winstone Blackwell Foundation Trust gave $4.5 million, its largest ever donation, to support the centre. In 1877, Kay Edgar became the first woman in New Zealand to gain a degree, graduating in mathematics and Latin. But for most of its history, science has been a largely male preserve, and the University of Auckland was no exception. The Gender Equity Platform is the faculty's strategic initiative to change that, to ensure women's and girls' experiences of science are positive, inclusive, and equitable. And to bring the benefits to science that come with diversity. One of our greatest challenges is how to restore and sustain our unique flora and fauna. The George Mason Centre for the Natural Environment is a multidisciplinary integrated centre that gathers the brightest talent from across the Faculty of Science to accelerate discovery and translate it into positive practical solutions. 